In the vast expanse of Azeroth, where ancient powers stir and the skies tell tales of old, there exists a race whose elegance belies their fierce determination to protect the mountainous lands they call home. These creatures, with their slender forms and powerful wings, are the embodiment of nature's untamed spirit and its tempestuous wrath. As matriarchs of the heavens, born from a legacy as old as the world itself, they wield primal forces with a mastery that speaks to their divine origins. Let us together navigate the winds of history and allow me, the lawmaster of this species, to unfold the hidden knowledge and ancestral stories that define the Harpies, a mystical race like no other. Harpies appear as a blend of night elven beauty and avian menace, with significant features including long, sharp talons and large wings that span a staggering array of colors. They use powerful elemental magic, though the source of their power remains largely unknown due to their aggressive nature towards invaders. In a world where mysteries often tie back to the ancient gods, the curious case of these creatures presents a peculiar puzzle. There seems to be no presence of male harpies, a fact that has baffled the most seasoned explorers of Azeroth's history. Even Bran Bronzebeard doesn't dare burn his fingers on this subject, often jesting that perhaps in their divine perfection, this race represents a form that needs no counterpart. With age, the beauty of these female individuals deepens, an external reflection of their enduring spirit and the forces they command. Yet, it's within their territories that the complexity of their character truly unfolds. Amidst the harsh whispers of the wind and the secluded reaches of their aerial domains, the Harpies foster a society ruled by strength and cunning. Harpy culture is organized into a matriarchal hierarchy, with various matriarchs overseeing distinct factions across their territories. The road to becoming a queen within Harpy society involves killing, betrayal and tormenting countless enemies and allies. These mistresses, revered and feared, lead their flights with an iron will, their authority unquestioned, their decisions shaping the fate of their kind. Chosen through trials of magic, strength and wisdom, the Harpy Queens embody the heart and soul of their avian kin, guiding them through the tempests of Azeroth's ever-shifting landscapes. From their ancestral grounds of the Stone Talon Mountains to the far reaches of Northrend and the Alterac Valley, Harpies have demonstrated remarkable adaptability. Their territories are evident by the remnants of those who dared to intrude upon their lands and their nests, which are often littered with the remains of their victims, solidifying their widespread influence and the respect they command across Azeroth's many regions. Yet this aerial dominion is not born of malice but necessity, a relentless drive to protect and nurture their own kind against the encroachments of civilization and other forces that threaten their ancient ways. These avian beings are highly intelligent creatures capable of communicating with other races when they choose to, speaking in a language that resembles Darnassian. Nevertheless, the behavior of harpies towards others is typically aggressive, with raids and attacks being a common aspect of their interaction with the outside world, employing crude weaponry alongside their slashing talons. As we are on the verge of unraveling the mystique of the Harpies, we are invited to look beyond the tales of savagery, to the core of a race bound by the rhythms of the natural world and the ancient pacts that govern their existence. But as we delve deeper, one must wonder, in a world where power is often seized by force, to whom do the skies and mountains of Azeroth truly belong? Is it those who claim it by might, those who are born to it, or those who understand its deepest secrets? The answer, wrapped in the winds of Azeroth, may be as varied and vast as the lands themselves. The legacy of the Harpies begins in an era long forgotten by most, heralded by a celestial being, from whom the Harpies claim their descent. This lineage, steeped in the mystery of creation itself, marks the genesis of their existence, intertwining their fates with the dawning of Azeroth's history. Before the tumultuous events that reshaped the continents of the world, Aviana, the mistress of birds, and the revered guardian of the Mother Tree, played a vital role in the lives of her children, 
and the myriad winged creatures of the world. Her essence turned this celestial arboretum into more than just a haven. It became a symbol of peace, healing, and eternal rest. Flying beings from all corners of Azeroth harbored a collective dream, a deeply ingrained yearning to join Aviana in the afterlife, soaring endlessly through the tranquil skies woven into the World Tree's endless canopy. However, the idyllic peace the Bird Mother and her children knew was not to last. The Burning Legion's invasion brought devastation, and with it, a grim peek into the fragility of life and the sanctity of their dreams. Aviana, in a valorous stand against the invading darkness, led her children and the flocks of Azeroth into battle. The skies soon became the stage for a harrowing conflict. Despite their courage and the strength drawn from their bond with their mistress, the overwhelming might of the Legion proved insurmountable. Aviana's fall from the sky, pierced by demonic spears, marked a profound rupture in the natural order, sending shockwaves through the Emerald Dream and the hearts of all who revered her. In the wake of this cataclysmic event, as Aviana's spirit drifted formlessly in the land of dreams, the world she left behind found itself astray. The once unbreakable bond between her and her offspring faced the ultimate test. It is speculated that in the absence of their matriarch's guiding spirit, the path of Aviana's children, including that of the Harpies, diverged. Some remained steadfast in their guardianship of nature, while others, perhaps swayed by grief or the corrupting influence of the Burning Legion, might have strayed far from their former sanctuary. These beings, bearing the legacy of their forebear in twisted form, became a testament to the profound impact of Aviana's loss, a speculative tale of transformation from grace to vengeance, from protectors of the sky to its feared assailants. Driven by an insatiable wanderlust and a voracious appetite for destruction, the Harpies ventured into territories new and old. From their ancestral roosts within the craggy peaks of the Stone Talon Mountains, they spread their wings, both literally and metaphorically, across the vast expanses of Kalimdor. The environments they settled in were laid to waste, transformed into barren wastelands as they built their dominions upon the bones of the fallen, their laughter echoing through the air like a malevolent hymn to their own ruthlessness. As the wheel of time turns, the harpies endure, representing their resilience, cunning and the will to survive. Their story, woven from the ancient past to the present day, remains a fascinating, if cautionary, tale within the vast, epic saga of Azeroth. Interwoven with loss, corruption and persistence, their narrative beckons us to delve deeper, challenging us to disentangle the complex web of myth and reality that defines the Harpy's storied existence. Our adventure to discover the Harpies of Azeroth begins off Kalimdor's northwestern coast. Residing around the Oracle Glade in Teldrassil, the Bloodfeather tribe distinguishes itself with striking red-white plumage, a vivid contrast to the lush surroundings of this verdant world tree. Under the leadership of Fury Shelder, these Harpies are not just a mere nuisance, but a formidable threat to the Night Elves and their revered lands. The Bloodfeathers are adept at using the terrain to their advantage, launching surprise attacks on messengers bound for Darnassus and aggressively defending their territory from any who dare intrude their abode. The tribe's structure is complex, consisting of sorceresses, rogues, wind witches and furies, each fulfilling a crucial role within their matriarchal society. The sorceresses wield nature-based spells, using both frost and fire magic to overpower their rivals, while rogues lurk in the shadows, ready to ambush unwary travelers with their sharp claws. Arinia Cloudsbreak, stationed in the glade, leads a valiant effort to curtail the Bloodfeather's encroachment. Charged with safeguarding the Oracle Tree, a task of paramount importance to the Night Elves, she and her group of sentinels face the daunting challenge of pushing back the harpy threat. The blood feathers, however, with their slashing talons and piercing shrieks, prove to be demanding opponents. Arinia calls upon brave night elven explorers to venture into the nests of these harpies, 
in order to quell their numbers and protect the Oracle Grove from their desecration. As the protectors of the forest issue bounties for the Harpies' blood feather belts, the future of the tribe hangs in a precarious balance, symbolizing a broader uncertainty faced by all denizens of the crown of the earth. Once thriving in the seclusion offered by the Great Tree, their very existence, and indeed, the fate of the entire ecosystem of Teldrassil now teeters on the brink of irreversible change. The looming War of the Thorns and its subsequent destruction cast long shadows over the land, marking an end to an era of relative peace and beginning a new chapter of struggle and adaptation. As we venture into the rugged and arid landscapes of Duratar, Navigating through the windswept expanses of the Dry Gulch Ravine and Razorwind Canyon, we encounter the domain of the Dustwind Harpies. With their distinct blue and pink featherwork, these harpies embody the relentless spirit of the wilderness that surrounds them. They have adapted to a life of banditry, preying upon the caravans that dare traverse their territories, snatching supplies and amassing them within their inaccessible cliffside nests. The most formidable among them stand guard over their precious eggs, embodying the fierce protectiveness inherent to their kind. The Dustwind tribe is composed of various members, each playing a vital role in their societal structure. The ranks include pillagers, savages, and the fearsome storm witches. Together, they form an intimidating force capable of menacing the horde's supply routes, jeopardizing the safety and continuity of essential provisions. This threat has not gone unnoticed, prompting calls for intervention to safeguard the vital lifelines that the caravans represent. Reslak finds himself in a precarious position, tasked with the welfare of these caravans. Despite his prowess and dedication to his work, the continuous assaults by the Dustwind Harpies present a challenge that even he finds daunting. Faced with the loss of crucial shipments to these winged marauders, Reslak is compelled to seek assistance, rallying travelers to retrieve stolen supplies and quell the harpy ordeal. In an effort to restore safety and security to the caravan routes, a decisive action is proposed to diminish the Dustwind population directly. This pragmatic approach reflects the harsh realities of life in Duratar, where survival often necessitates direct confrontation with the pressing issues emanating from the area itself. Through the combined efforts of willing adventurers, there is hope that the menace of the Dustwind Harpies can be mitigated, ensuring the uninterrupted flow of provisions essential for the Horde's capital of Orgrimmar. As peace is momentarily restored to the ravines and canyons of Durotar, those involved in the supply routes can breathe a sigh of relief, knowing that the paths ahead are secure for the time being. In the heart of Mulgore, amidst the sprawling grasslands and towering mesas, we come across the Windfury tribe, harpies of enchanting blue and white wing patterns. Known as the ancestral adversaries of the Tauran, they lay claim to Windfury Ridge as their stronghold. From this vantage point, they launch their assaults on travelers venturing to and from Thunder Bluff. Led by Sister Hatelash, the group has established their nests across both the southern and northern reaches of the Great Plains, marking their territory with a vigilance that speaks to their fierce independence and predatory nature. The hierarchy within the tribe is defined by roles that cater to their strengths and mystical abilities. Sister Hatelash herself channels powers that tap into the elemental forces of air and storm, harnessing the untamed spirit of the wind to assert her dominance. The Tauran, whose lands and lives are connected with all those who inhabit Mulgore, have long sought to mitigate the threat the tribe poses. Ian Eagle Talon calls upon young adventurers to prove their mettle by challenging the Wind Fury Harpies. Tasks such as retrieving azure and bronze feathers for ceremonial headdresses serve as rites of passage for the Tauran youth, interweaving the Wind Fury's presence with the cultural fabric and rituals of the inhabitants of Mulgore. Through these trials, the Tauran not only prepare the next generation for the challenges that lie beyond their homeland, but also maintain a delicate balance with the natural world, of which the harpies are an integral part. 
The ongoing skirmishes and challenges posed by the Wind Fury tribe encapsulate the struggle between the Tauren and their winged foes. Despite the hostility, there is a grudging respect for the Harpies, evidenced by the incorporation of their feathers as symbols of honor and achievement. Leaving Mulgore's grassy plains behind, we head towards the arid and tumultuous terrain of the Barrens. Here, amidst the unforgiving environment of the Dry Hills, the Witchwing tribe establishes a menacing presence. Their black feathers create a visually striking appearance, standing out sharply against the yellowed backdrop of their surroundings. The Witchwing's organization is militaristic in nature, with lieutenants known as Slayers leading the lower echelons, distinguishable by the rings they adorn, signifying their rank among the group. The tribe's composition further includes a variety of roles tailored to their guerrilla warfare tactics, from the stealthy ambushes to the elemental might of the Windcallers. Led by the infamous Serena Bloodfeather, these harpies have forged a reputation through their relentless campaign of vengeance, focusing their fury on horde caravans as retribution for the killing of Serena's sister by local orc forces. The Horde, long suffering from the tribe's strikes on their supply lines, has put out calls for action against the Harpies, seeking to diminish their numbers and quell the threat they pose to the security of their roots. The Witchwing Harpies are not merely silent predators of the skies, they voice their threats and intentions with chilling clarity. Phrases like, Our matron craves the taste of your blood, or Serena Bloodfeather will rip out your eyes and feast upon your heart often resound across the barren landscape should an unfortunate traveller venture too near. In response to the ongoing menace, Darsuk's swift dagger stationed at the crossroads orchestrates a series of countermeasures aimed at disrupting the Witchwing hierarchy. From collecting talons as proof of harpy defeats to assassinating key lieutenants and ultimately targeting Serena Bloodfeather herself, the efforts to safeguard the Horde's interests are as calculated as they are brutal. Through these confrontations, the Witchwing tribe remains a symbol of the wild and untamable spirit that pervades the region, a constant challenge to those who traverse the harsh landscapes of Azeroth. In the shadowed crags and ashen soils of the Charred Vale, situated within the Stone Talon Mountains, we come across the ancestral homeland of the Harpy race. Adorned in imposing red and white plumage, the Blood Fury tribe have long stood as staunch guardians of their sacred domain, fiercely opposing any attempts at intrusion or restoration, upholding the sanctity of their birthright. The Vale, scarred by conflict and the greed of industrial encroachment, has become a contested ground, with the Harpies at the heart of the strife, halting the Druids' efforts to heal the land. Under the leadership of Blood Fury Ripper, who reigns with unmatched authority, they have expanded their influence, becoming a significant force of resistance against those who seek to reclaim the blighted wilderness. Blood Fury Ripper, viewed by her followers as a queen, commands a diverse cadre of harpies, including the ambushers, rogue feathers, and wind callers. Each member plays a pivotal role in the tribe's survival and defense, executing raids and ambushes on nearby settlements and passing through adventurers with avian precision. The conflict with the tribe has drawn the attention of the region's denizens, leading to calls for action to drive these harpies from their entrenched positions. Keeper Albergorm, a guardian of the forest spirits, is among those who have voiced alarm at the destruction wrought upon the charred vale, not only by industrial forces, but also by the blood furies. In a bid to restore balance and initiate regrowth, he urges brave souls to venture into the heart of the Discord to diminish the tribe's grip on the land, marking the beginning of a hopeful yet arduous journey towards restoration. Similarly, Magran Earthbinder's quest to defeat the Blood Fury Queen marks a crucial turning point, underscoring the belief that healing the Veil vale can only commence with the removal of its most significant threats. As adventurers heed these calls to action, they engage in a broader struggle to reclaim and mend the landscape, contributing to a vision where nature and civilization might once again coexist in harmony. 
Nestled within the lush tropical expanse of Feralis lies the ruins of Ravenwind, a place echoing the ancient grandeur of the Calderai civilization, now overshadowed by the presence of the North Spring Harpies. Characterized by their greenish skin and dark pink feathers, these harpies have taken dominion over the remnants of this once great highborn city. Led by Idana Haight Talon, the North Spring tribe has become a challenging presence in northern Feralis, engaging in frequent skirmishes with the local Tauren of Camp Mohachi and posing a relentless threat to all who traverse these verdant forests. The ruins of Ravenwind, with its storied past and architectural marvels, underscore the conflicts that unfold within its bounds. The Harpies, utilizing the ruins as their stronghold, have entrenched themselves deeply within this ancient site. Talo Thornhoof, a representative of the Tauren inhabiting the region, has taken a particular interest in the North Spring's activities, specifically targeting the tribe's queen. The quest to slay Adana and retrieve her dark heart symbolizes a larger struggle to reclaim the ruins from the Harpy's clutches. The Horn of Hate Talon, a relic capable of summoning the Harpy Queen herself, becomes a focal point in this conflict. As we reflect on the long-standing presence of the North Spring Harpies in Feralis, a question arises, beckoning us to ponder the deeper intricacies of this ancient land. Are the actions taken against the Harpies, with their lineage stretching back to the dawn of time, a necessary measure for peace? In this world of Warcraft, where the lines between invader and guardian blur, who truly has the right to decide who lives and who dies? Amidst the whispers of the wind, we are left to wonder if true harmony can ever be achieved, or if the cycle of conflict is an inescapable part of Azeroth's legacy. As we venture into the rugged terrain of the Thousand Needles, we encounter the imposing Screeching Canyon. This natural gorge is the stronghold of the Screeching Tribe Harpies, under the leadership of the fearsome Grenka Blood Screech. Their eye-catching blue ruffled wings set them apart from the crimson backdrop of the canyon, a visual representation of their fierce nature. This tribe is known for its aggressive demeanor, especially evident in their assaults on the Tauren settlement of Freewind Post. Emerging from the shadows every few nights after sundown, they unleash their fury upon the unsuspecting inhabitants, driven by an insatiable hunger for domination and a zeal to protect their hoarded provisions stored deep within the rogue feather den. The den, a cavernous recess carved into the mountainside, harbors these blue-plumaged marauders, Within this lair, the Harpies fiercely guard their accumulated foodstuffs, a precious commodity in the barren expanse of their territory. Grenka, the matriarch of this tribe, commands her followers with an iron talon, her authority uncontested within the cavern's confines. Her ability to silence her adversaries with a deafening screech not only showcases her formidable prowess, but also underscores the peril she poses to all who dare venture too close to her domain. Dawn Plainstalker, recognizing the growing threat posed by Grenka and her tribe, seeks to challenge the resilience and courage of adventurers willing to confront this menace. The task set before them, a test of endurance, involves a daring foray into the heart of the rogue feather den with the objective of disrupting the harpy's food supply, thereby provoking the wrath of Grenka herself. This mission, fraught with danger, is a rite of passage for the increasingly experienced Tauren warriors, while simultaneously delivering a significant blow against the Screeching Harpy's stranglehold over the region. It reflects a journey of both physical and spiritual growth, where overcoming the tribe's menace paves the way for future challenges. As adventurers return with Grenka's claw as proof of their valor, they not only earn the respect of their peers, but also contribute to the restoration of peace however fleeting, to the beleaguered lands of a thousand needles. In the frost-bitten landscape of the Alterac Valley, amidst the howling winds and icy crevasses, the Snowblind tribe finds its refuge within the Icewing Caverns. These harpies, adorned with pristine white feathers that blend seamlessly into the snow-covered surroundings, are a chilling embodiment of the wilderness's ferocity. 
Their reputation as formidable adversaries is well known across the region, particularly to the Stormpike guards stationed in the area, who view the Snowblind as one of their most relentless foes. The proximity of the tribe to the heart of the Alliance's offensive operations has led to numerous skirmishes, with the Alliance defenders employing the aid of skilled fighters to diminish the Harpies' threat and secure safe passage for their ranks. Their caverns, a labyrinth of snow and stone just west of the Icewing Bunker, has since become a proving ground for those seeking to pledge their allegiance to the Stormpike Guard. Within the depths of this frigid cavity, the Stormpike Banner is guarded fervently by the snowblind ambushers and windcallers. These harpies exhibit no mercy to intruders, ready to unleash their fury upon anyone who dares to challenge their dominion. The mission to recover the banner from the clutches of the Snowblind tribe is more than a mere task. It represents a crucial step in the initiation process of new members joining the ranks of Alterax Defense Forces. As the Stormpike banner is returned to Lieutenant Hagadin, the successful completion of this trial marks the beginning of a new chapter for the Initiates, now bound by their shared experiences and the insignia they proudly bear. This endeavour sets the stage for the harsher realities of the conflict in Alterac Valley yet to come, where the theatres of war expand from the hidden recesses to the grand stage of open terrain, where every inch is fought over to the last cold breath. We move our exploration to the frost-bitten expanses of Northrend. Here in Dragonblight, the Coldwind tribe has etched out a territory in the secluded and elevated Coldwind Heights. Cloaked in striking black plumage, these harpies contrast starkly against the snow-blanketed landscapes they inhabit. These heights, located between the Crystal Vice and Angrathar the Wrath Gate, provides a strategic vantage point for the harpies. Led by the bewildering Mistress of the Cold Wind, recognized by her distinctive pink legs and arms, this tribe has become a notorious thorn in the side of the goblins of Nozzle Rust Post. Engaging in frequent raids, they disrupt the goblins' operations by killing their couriers, effectively hampering the trade and services essential for withstanding these cold weather conditions. In a bold attempt to retaliate, the goblins seek to employ explosives against the harpies, only for their plans to be thwarted as the mistress of the cold wind personally obliterated their aerial bomber. Her warning resonated through the skies. You are not welcome in our home. Leave and find some other land to pillage. This act of defiance by the harpy matriarch signals the tribe's fierce determination to protect their domain at all costs, challenging the goblins' resolve and technological ingenuity. In the wake of the counter-attack, an uneasy tension blankets Coldwind Heights. The goblins, humbled yet not defeated, are forced to reconsider their approach, contemplating strategies that could circumvent the harpy's aerial dominance. This stalemate beckons the question of coexistence in a land scarred by conflict, where both parties vie for survival in the unforgiving climate of Northrend. As we leave behind the Harpies of Coldwind, we soon traverse the biting cold terrain of the Storm Peaks, where the Frostfeather tribe has carved out its own niche of terror and aggression. Occupying the icy expanses of Boar's Breath and Rohemdal Pass, this tribe, under the leadership of Serana Ice Shriek, has escalated tensions within the region, particularly against the Frostborn Dwarves. The Frostfeather's aggressive tactics are not limited to the usual skirmishes and raids. They have also taken to stealing eggs from the Stormcrest Eagles, a revered symbol of the Storm Peak's natural majesty. This practice has drastically reduced the eagle population, compelling these noble birds to guard their nests incessantly against the harpy's predations. Such actions have since destabilized the local ecosystem, leading to sparked outrage among the inhabitants of Frosthold, who see the preservation of these birds as a cause worth fighting for. In a macabre twist of nature, these harpies, draped in their ominous black feathers, have taken to a chilling practice that belies their savage instincts. It is not merely the eggs of the Stormcrest Eagles they steal, but the very future of these majestic animals. 
With a cruel patience uncharacteristic of predators, the frost feathers nurture these stolen eggs to hatchlings, only to consume the fledglings in a grim feast that sustains their tribe through the bitterest of colds. Yet amidst the outrage and calls for retribution, there lies an uncomfortable truth, a reflection on the savage beauty and merciless nature of Azeroth itself, where life and death dance in the shadow of the mountains, and survival often comes at the cost of innocence. In the grim tale of the Frostfeather Harpies, the line between endurance and savagery blurs, leaving us to ponder the harsh realities faced by those who dwell in the world's most unforgiving corners. Now that our exploration of the different Harpy tribes comes to a close, we set our sights toward the verdant expanse of Mount Hyjal. Here, amidst ancient woods and sacred grounds, the Wormwing tribe flits through the air with their brightly array of colored feathers catching the sun's rays. Once peaceful denizens living in harmony with the druids of the Talon and other winged creatures at the shrine of Aviana, their allegiance has since shifted. Under the leadership of Marion Wormwing, this tribe now casts a shadow over the rim of the world, aligning themselves with Sethria of the Black Dragonflight in a dark pact to thwart the rebirth of Aviana and to lay waste to the sanctuary that once offered them refuge. The shrine, a bastion for all winged beings and a focal point of druidic power under the guardianship of Skylord Omnuron, is a testament to the enduring legacy of Aviana, the wild god and mistress of birds. The Twilight's Hammer's assault on Mount Hyjal has seen the refuge and its inhabitants come under dire threat, with the Wormwing Harpies betraying their former allies in a frenzied assault fueled by their newfound Dark Associates. Marion Wormwing, acting under Sethria's illicit commands, is subsequently captured and interrogated, revealing an alarming conspiracy with a singular purpose, to ensure Aviana's eternal absence from the world. This plot aims to prevent her very rebirth, challenging the defenders of Hyjal to avert a catastrophe that would not just alter the earthly realm, it threatens to reshape the heavens themselves. As the battle for Mount Hyjal unfolds, the conflict with the Wormwing tribe transcends mere territorial disputes, becoming a struggle for the soul of the continent itself. The efforts to unravel the plot against Aviana's return encapsulate a larger narrative of resilience and sacrifice of those who watch over Azeroth's most sacred places. Amidst the turmoil, the defenders of Hyjal are reminded of the delicate balance between creation and destruction and the pivotal role they play in safeguarding the legacy of the Ancients against the ever-invading darkness. As we let the winds of our journey settle, we glide back to the familiar grounds of our beginning. Just as these creatures embrace the calm after the storm, we too find solace in the quiet that follows our exploration. Our adventure through their skies, echoing with the fierce cries of guardianship over their terrain, now becomes a part of our shared memories. In the hush that currently envelops us, the legacy of the Harpies whispers on, reminding all who accompanied us of the untamed spirits we've encountered and the wild, uncharted territories of Azeroth. Thank you for soaring with me into their storm-tossed territories, where each shriek and gust of air holds tales of mystique and strength. Until we meet again, fellow explorers, and may your paths be guided by the winds of curiosity and the courage to face the untold mysteries of this fantastical world. <laughs>